much. Good to see you all here. Um, I don't know where quite to begin. Um, I think that basically what we should do is get into a question and answer period because I'll probably tell you more that way than I would any other way. But uh, let me just start by saying that um, uh, about a year ago, well, a little over a year ago now, um, I handed down an edict to my managers and agents saying that I was going to hang up the idea of putting on makeup <laughs> in my acting career. And uh, some three days later, my manager called me and asked if I was sitting down. I said, well, how much makeup is this now? <laughs> Tell me about a, a project called Beauty and the Beast, and I said, absolutely, under no circumstances do I even want to see the script. I just don't want to be tempted in any way because I'm very serious about this. I think it's time to see if I can capitalize on my own look. <laughs> well, being a great manager that he is, he uh, came to deliver the script to my door, and there it was in the morning, right next to the paper. And uh, the script was lighter, so I decided to read it. <laughs> I got about halfway through. I called him up and I said, what do I have to do to play this part? And uh, the rest is sort of history. I'm very glad I did because um, uh, it, this is a character that uh, I seem to have trained all my life to play. Um, you know, having come from a sort of a fairly classical acting background in terms of my training, uh, Shakespeare and studying in school and stuff, getting a master's degree. This is like playing Hamlet every week for an actor. Um, uh, it's, it's just totally boundless in, in the rewards and, and uh, in the, the degree to which it engages me on every level. And uh, I'm really thrilled that I went against my instincts and uh, decided to down the makeup. Uh, what I didn't expect to have happen, because I was so used to having my own taste be sort of, um, well, every time I liked the project and thought it was going to make a lot of money, it never did. So I, <laughs> I loved Beauty and the Beast, it was destined to fail. Um, and that, that was another reason why I decided to take it. I had no idea that I'd be standing here a year later and, uh, you know, that it would be as celebrated as it turned out. It's just an incredibly gratifying. A great ride. Um, basically, that's where I am with it, and uh, I think that really what I ought to do is open up the floor for questions, and uh, we can get all that out of the way and find out a little bit more about what the whole process is. Okay? Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun working on Quest for Fire. A lot of fun working on Quest for Fire is a question. No. <laughs> Um, with my first movie, so I was operating on a level of uh, adrenaline that took me through some of the toughest moments in my life, uh, just physically. The director's idea for a perfect shooting day was 29 degrees and raining, and we had absolutely no clothes on. We had some fur yeah. draped over our shoulders, um, and we were out there sometimes, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. So it was a very tough picture to make, and uh, there was an awful lot of complaining going on. <laughs> but um, like I said, I really believed in that project, and I thought it was something very special to be involved in. And uh, whatever nuisance and passion they were making it were totally overcome by the excitement of the fact that I was making a very big movie. <laughs> I thought I was going to make it. It's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, in all of your movies, you eat. Always. <laughs> you don't eat on Beauty and the Beast. I like that. I'm trying to quit. <laughs> is your voice hard? Is it hard on you? No, it's not really. You know, it's such a, a, a quiet, gentle voice. It, it's um, my throat doctor. I got real sick in the middle. They gave me three weeks off and I decided to fall apart. <laughs> I was seeing a, a, a throat doctor because I totally lost my voice and had the worst sore throat of my life. And he said that the voice was awful for me to be doing. But I, my theory is it's just so soft and gentle that even though there's a little bit of gravel that I put into it, um, it it's never really been a bird. Do it. <laughs> well, the funny thing about that. I, I, I really can't even do that voice when I'm rehearsing 
themes. I mean, it's just funny. Try. Right. You know, <laughs> no, I just. <laughs> that's the voice that lives Friday night at uh, 8 o'clock, <laughs> 7 o'clock Central Time. <laughs> Uh, in the shower. <laughs> I, sing, uh, I sing for myself. And I actually tried to put an act together at one point, and, and my close friends and advisors told me never, ever. <laughs> <laughs> you have too much of a career at stake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. How do you like doing uh, things alone? I enjoy the Thank you. Um, well, Name of the Rose was directed by the same man who did Quest for Fire. I knew that. I, uh, you know, the Quest for Fire didn't really have any big stars in it, but Name of the Rose did. And uh, people came up to me all the time and said, uh, this guy's insane. You know, he, he likes to shoot in sub-zero weather and keeps people out doors all the time. I mean, he really does. He loves to see actors suffer. He <laughs> gives better performances that way or something. But um, I said, you have no idea what suffering is like. Because at least in this picture, we all get to wear shoes. <laughs> it was, you know, whenever you work for him, whenever you do a film for him, you know you're alive. There's no question about that. Because life goes up a couple of notches in terms of the size of the um, and I thought it was an important project. I really thought it was uh, very literate and very uh, imaginative and uh, real movie making, real sort of entertainment with real good actors. Enjoyed it immensely. Yeah. Can you tell me how long it takes for the makeup on Beauty and the Beast for you? Uh, four hours. It takes four hours to put the makeup on. How long to put that on? The question was how long it takes to get it off. It depends where I'm going afterwards. <laughs> where I'm going with. Yeah. How would you describe yourself if you use only my name? Uh -huh. <laughs> how would I describe myself? I could use only five adjectives. What's an adjective again? <laughs> Yeah. Even though I have liked it, my very favorite episode, a lot of us don't think this is 
exactly yet, but we're definitely addressing the idea and finding out if there's any interest in that kind of thing. Oh, there is. <laughs> I will deliver that message to the record company. Do you know when? Um, well, if, if, if all the, uh, the teeth get crossed and the eyes get dotted, then uh, we could do it real soon and have it out for around Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of people who are interested in this kind of thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that I know of. It may come out to you. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, there it is. <laughs> you, you, know the, you know the person that plays the child of Benson? Uh, John, John Franklin. John Franklin, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the name. That's his name. He's, uh, he's a pretty accomplished actor. He's been around for a long time. <laughs> Very nice guy.
but it's a real open give and take relationship. Well, I think that the album, the first album that's being discussed has just been doing various readings, uh, very much like the readings that we've done on the show, which is not just Shakespeare, but it's uh, more, more eclectic than that. Um, I don't know whether, you know, I'm, I'm sure if it sells a lot of copies, you know, we'll do a Christmas album. <laughs> Roger Treats uh, sitting on, at a heart. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
to even get away from good guys and bad guys. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, from Vincent saving Catherine in the last five minutes yeah. of the year. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I think that those kinds of shows are inevitable. I think that they're going to be our fair share of those things. But the ones that get away from those, which is why I like the last episode so much, um, those are the ones that I think are golden and uh, <coughs> where you know, it, it gets to be very obvious. And uh, in regards to two hour special, Hey, you know, just ask me, I'll be there. Yeah. The one that really hurt me was when Jack Bauer and they just literally tore your heart because of, you know, no. who you no were. No way down. What? No way down. Uh -huh. No way down. Yeah. You know, I usually don't get torn. But those are my eyes are flawed. Yeah. Uh, no way down. She's probably going to make a response to that. You know, that's the one where um, I get blinded and sort of yeah. deafened in the explosion. I, I know that that was a tough episode to take. There was a lot of violence and a lot of hard stuff to see the character go through. But I like the idea of yeah. all of this stress and energy to just go home, you know, to just find his way home. I just thought that, that was very dramatic and very strong. And that was one of the episodes I liked a lot. And also the one that when you were captured in a, or almost by the animal cage. That was mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that's the one that the lady was just referring to, the Ryan Boyd's cage. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 it's just, you know, I, like I said, I don't get torn up about the things that happen to me.
Thank you. I, uh, one of the most gratifying things that happened to me was uh, I have a four-year-old daughter, and for most of her life, I didn't work much. I, you know, so it was like, and my wife worked a lot. So it was me and her all day, every day, at the park, and taking her to school, and, you know, feeding her, and changing her, and all that stuff. <laughs> And I became sort of one of the park mothers, you know. <laughs> so I talked about breastfeeding. And, uh, and uh, the, the week of the second show, on the Saturday morning after the thing aired, I got three phone calls in a row from other four-year-olds <laughs> telling me how much they liked the show. You know, I think, wow, that's, that's, that's the best. When kids, because you know, when you have kids, you realize how pure they are and how they always say what they what they feel. And uh, when you can impress them, I think that that's that's uh, the goal. And, um, when people write to me and say that they sit down with their kids and watch the show, I just uh, get a chill up my spine. But that is real important. It's something that there's not enough of in our culture. Anyway, 
I, I, I take it all with a grain of salt, and I appreciate it, and it's very gratifying, but there's a part of me that can't comprehend it or let it in. Sorry. <laughs> How about your four-year-old? Does she have dreams about dad? <laughs> and my four-year-old seems to be, um, it's curious uh, the way she, you know, at first she was a little bit afraid of this, and I think that partly because she was so, so the makeup was so good that if I had it on, I was sitting like right next to you, you couldn't tell I had makeup on, you would just oh, really? be busy. Huh? Um, and that scared a four-year-old. I mean, one thing you see somebody in a Halloween mask, and you know that that's a mask, but this is a whole other person we're talking about. So at first she was a little afraid. Now she's um, gotten used to it, and I think she's becoming fascinated with her friend's perception of, <laughs> of Beauty and the Beast. And, you know, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it doesn't mean much to her. First time she ever saw me on, on television was in Question Five, so.
I want to thank you for the work you did in the narration of Tecumseh, the outdoor drama in Ohio. I've never seen or heard the audience get so quiet so fast when your narration starts. It's wonderful. Really? Yeah, I haven't like seen it yet. You should come. <laughs> yes. My scenes are shot early, middle, and late. <laughs> My average shooting day is about 16 hours. I'm gone as much as 21. Um, because the makeup takes four hours, and you know, an average shooting day is 12 to 14. That's the nature of the beast, as it were. <laughs> When do you sleep with such long days? I sleep on my feet. Cat nap? Oh.
will try to in the future. My wife uh, is a big fan of the show, I think, although she never tells me that she doesn't want to get a swelled head. Yeah. Uh, what is Catherine now? Where's Catherine now? I think she's in Europe on vacation, waiting for the writer's strike to end. Yes? In that last episode, she came running across here. She almost knocked you over. Yeah, she did. She knocked me over in a couple of takes. I just got to the point where I just... She was coming for it about 30 miles an hour. That's what I mean about her. She just, I mean, you know, she goes right forward every time. He didn't say that. <laughs> he, he mentioned a convention. He said it. He, he actually, he called it a Beauty and the Beast convention. He knows what he's ready for. But uh, along the way, I found out that this was, you know, I'm, I'm very touched that the, the people who, uh, you know, have been enthusiastic about Star Wars. That that carries over. I know I'm going to be a part of Star Trek. Star Trek, you know, that, that carries over to Beauty and the Beast because you know, there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm, to say the least, and being conservative. So uh, when I heard that there was a correlation, I was real impressed. Do I use a Vincent voice on my wife? How tall are you? Six foot two. I don't know. Line of blue. Do you be going to fight with me and I and make a personal appearance? Indianapolis, Indiana would love to have you. Well, we, we deal with all those requests as they come. Um, uh, as far as I know, there are none in the, in the very near future. Um, you know, and, and I do them as I can. You know. And this is all very new to me. Uh, nobody ever cared what I thought about anything. <laughs> <laughs> First time that you looked at the mirror, did you see yourself fully naked? Yes. That's another thing I should explain. Um, having just gotten finished doing The Name of the Rose, where I played a real beast, you know, hunchback with, you know, ugly features. Um, as I was reading the script, that was what kept coming into my mind, that I was going to play a troll, sort of. <laughs> somebody with very gnarled, you know, hunched over features. Somebody who was truly ugly. And so that would point up the, the, the poignancy of this relationship. As I got close to getting the part, the producer showed me the sketch that Rick Baker had made of this incredible lion man. And I was totally surprised and shocked because they really succeeded in making him quite attractive, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and regal. And, uh, you know, I was very taken aback by it. When, when we actually put, finally put the makeup on, uh, you know, <laughs> quite a feeling, you know. You, you are literally transformed, you know, taken out of the, the humdrum of your normal existence and put on another plane. Star Trek. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
set dresser on the show. She just does some incredible work. I mean, the first time I saw my room uh, with that Statue of Justice and the little, little Statue of Liberty and the old jukebox, I mean, I was, you know, took my breath. I think we have time for one more question. Yes. She's like heard real negative things about the writer's strike. Uh, they had, they had, they put, they put the uh, contract to a vote the other night, and it was voted down three to one. And they said that if that happened, that it could be another two or three months before they oh. um, I just think that uh, the issue aside. I think that a strike in, uh, in, in my industry is, uh, I don't know, I don't understand it. You know, it's, uh, I, I think it's real unfortunate because the people who benefit are just a few and uh, the ones who are getting hurt by it are many. So I, I like to see the PDF too. If you have a writer that you know, please write him a letter and get back to work. We've had several hundred requests. <laughs> for Ron to read uh, Shakespeare's 29th song. Oh, we'd, like, oh. we'd like to wind up today with uh, Ron doing that 18th one. and look upon myself.